Hi, today we're looking at the Rad Tile View Control with the Rad Fluid Content Control. These controls are part of the Telerik Rad Controls for Silverlight and WPF Control Suite for .NET and XAML development. When we combine the Rad Fluid Content Control with the Rad Tile Control, we're able to put different content into the different tile sizes with fluid changes between them. The three content properties that we'll be paying attention to are content, small content, and large content. Let's take a look at how all of this is put together by opening Visual Studio and creating a new application called RadTileView.FluidContent. We'll accept Silverlight 5, and when the Telerik configuration wizard comes up, we're going to choose Navigation. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to need a business class. So let's go into Solution Explorer, find the project, and choose Add Class. We'll call our new class My View Model. Save that. Inside My View Model, we're going to create some properties. We have a property for the header, which is of type string. We have a property for each of the three images we're going to use as the content of our tile. So for that we need a small image, a normal sized image, and a large image. And we will create properties for accessing each of those three. Let's create a constructor for my view model. And in the body of the constructor we're going to initialize each of our three images. So small image, which you see is of type URI, takes a new URI pointing to the images folder that we've not created yet, and the small image.png file that we'll place into that folder. And then of course the URI kind will be relative. Let's do the same thing for the other two for image and large image, we'll just make a copy of small image and then modify the names that we're putting into there and modifying the names of the images themselves. With that in place, we're going to want to go ahead and add a folder, and that folder will hold our images. We can right click on the folder and say add existing items and go to the temp directory on disk C, where I have an images folder with three images that will represent the content for our tiles. Our small image will be 200 by 200, our image will be 400 by 400, and our large image will be 600 by 600. We need an additional public property called content state, which will get or set the content state and that is going to be based upon an enumeration. So let's scroll down below the class, but still within the namespace, and add an enum content state. We need a private member variable of type content state to hold the current value. So let's go ahead and add a private content state called underbar content state. We're going to implement inotify property changed, so we need an event of type property changed event handler which we will call property changed and then we'll use the convention of having an on property changed method that will check whether that event has been registered for and if so will raise the event let's mark this class to support i notify property changed and we can then make sure that we add the necessary using statement by going to just code and asking it to remove all the unnecessary using statements and add in system.componentModel, which is what is needed for inotify property changed. With all of that in place, we need to add a static member method for populating our tiles. That's going to take an I list of object and we're going to call it generate items. Generate items is going to contain a new observable collection of objects which we will call result 
and then we're going to generate 12 items to add to our observable collection by using the enumerable method range which is in the system link data space. We tell it that we want to range from 1 to 12 and then for each that it generates we're going to add to our collection a new view model setting or initializing its header property based on the number that we just generated. So we will format item and we will pass in as the parameterized value num which will be filled with the numbers 1 through 12 as we go through the for each loop. We can then return the result which is the observable collection now populated with 12 my view model instances. Let's save all of that, go over to mainpage.xaml. In mainpage.xaml, let's create a resources area. We're going to have quite a few resources to add to this project. The first thing that we want to do is create a data template. Let's give that a key of item template. Inside the item template, data template, we're going to have a text block whose text will bind to the header. Below that, let's drop in a second data template. This one's key is content template. And you can see that this is of type rad fluid content control. The content change mode is manual and the state binds to the content state. And this requires a converter, fluid content state converter that we've not yet written. Let's go over to the project and add a class to write that converter. You'll remember that we're going to call it fluid content state converter. Save you watching all of the typing. Let's drop in the code for this that we can then review. The fluid state content converter needs its using statements adjusted. Once again, we will go up to just code and refactor that. And you can see that this is an I value converter that's going to do the conversion and the conversion back. It takes a constant a content state and returns a fluid content control state of either small, normal, or large, where the default is normal. Convert back is going to take a fluid state and return a content state of small content, normal content, or large content. Returning to mainpage.xaml, we're going to drop in Telerik content binding collection, whose key is content binding. Let's put that at the top. That key is content binding collection, and notice the property name is tile state. Then there's binding to content state and a converter. We need to go ahead and create a class to support that tile state. So let's create the tile state converter. Once again, we'll drop in a code snippet that I've already prepared, fix up the using statements, and you can see that the converter in this case is taking a content state and returning a tile view item state. And the convert back is, of course, taking a tile state and converting it back. We need a namespace for our current application so that we can bring in the two converters we just created. Drop in fluid content state converter and tile state converter with their keys as well. Let's scroll down to the grid and drop in a rad tile view. Notice it's content template now is pointing to our static resource of content template and its item template is pointing to our static resource for the item template. These are both data templates that we've created in the resources. Let's save all of that and go to the code behind for main page where we need to load our data. We'll use just code to clean up the using statements. All right, let's set red tile views item source to my view model that generate items, which you'll remember is the static method 
that generates 12 items and let's build this and now that it builds let's run it and what we'll see is 12 items each with their own content which will all be the small image when we click on one of these tiles all of the other tiles will move over to the side with the small image and the one we click on item one will expand to the large image that's the 600 by 600 I've set them to different colors so we can easily distinguish them you can see on the side the small image is red the large image is blue and if I minimize the normal image is purple I hope you've seen how easy it is to adjust the content in your tile view using the fluid content control for Telerik this is Jesse Liberty I look forward to talking with you again very soon Thank you.